here we go part two welcome back this is going to be a continuation of what we did before talking about styles we're going to really go a little bit further with this one it's going to be the same topic but the difference is this time we're actually going to bring in the checkpoint merger and i think this is a really important aspect of how do I really dictate how you can really, really like be, I guess, aggressively take hold of style choices. And I'm gonna really show you how powerful this is. I know a lot of times I talk about this thing where, you know, don't get caught up in the prompts and all this kind of stuff, but I'm not just saying that. I really do mean that. And I think I'm maybe starting to beat a dead horse, even though it's been like only, what, three tutorials? <laughs> Uh, but it's really important like that's the power one of comfy ui is that it's not all about prompts anymore and two the other power of this is that it allows you to look at it a little bit differently i know i think when i first got a hold of this and somebody else said it in the comments too it's like not like it's like a programmer's perspective on how you do this and that's not too far off like like, like it seems like less artistic Think about it in the sense that it's just, it's a different type of medium than, you know, through saying it in artist, artistic terms, a different type of medium than what you're probably used to. So when you're doing all of this, it's somewhat of a, you're gonna have to get to know how your tools work to be able to use them effectively. And if you don't think about that, if you try to make that just not an issue, a non-issue, it's like when you use the paintbrush, you have to learn how to use a paintbrush. It's not like using a pencil. It's different. And oil paints are not like watercolors. They act different. You have to understand that basic concept of how you can even move your hand and how it moves across the paper the same way when you're trying to utilize this as a medium. What really makes it powerful? And I'm gonna show you <laughs> trying to, I guess, proving the point, but also demonstrating how this works, that it's not really all about the prompts. Prompts, as far as styling is concerned, or a lot of things, you'd be surprised at how much you can solve without having to go through the thing in the prompts. The prompts should be a specific guide for a specific idea. It shouldn't be everything that you figure out is done through prompting. And I think that's the basic way of looking at this. So to really take hold of the power of comfy ui and really understand this i want to just show you what i mean so we're going to do the same thing with the prompts <laughs> and i'm just going to make one prompt and i'm not going to change it i'm just going to use that same prompt but i'm going to steadily change the way it looks and the styling based upon the lauras and some checkpoint merge type thing i'm going to show you so let's <laughs> stick with the theme of animals um hmm a kangaroo let's, let's go non-domestic or at least maybe not this country. i don't know you can't domesticate kangaroos right a kangaroo wearing <laughs> they're all gonna be, gonna be wearing, wearing a straw hat a straw hat right all right so we're gonna stick with a we're gonna turn this off right now really quick so let's just bypass this so that it doesn't interfere but this is we're gonna use allura Let's see. Let's again. Let's let's base it in illustration. We'll just start. We'll start with deliver. Let's just run it, just because, right? We'll start with this just to see what it looks like. Make sure we're actually getting what we asked for, which is a kangaroo wearing a straw hat, right? Twenty. Everything six seems pretty normal. Nothing. Nothing really crazy. So again, the thing we're gonna focus on is beyond this. So once we get the thing we want. Boom, that's basically what it is. <laughs> May not be the, the best looking kangaroo. I mean, it is deliberate, right? It is a kangaroo. It is wearing a straw hat. I don't like necessarily the way it looks. So let's go with something. Let's use that one we used before. Let's use that that, that real, I think it was real cartoon XL, right? Um, I really like this model. It's also an XL model. So this means, as I said in the previous part one of this tutorial, you have to use XL, Loras, and everything like that as well. So remember, keep that in mind. These things have to match up. There's also another thing we're gonna do when we after we do this. So while it's running, because it's just gonna run this thing again, and it's gonna 
Keep us a kangaroo wearing a straw hat, right? We don't have to wait so much on that. So while it's running, let's build this other thing I was talking about. Well, one, I want to add on to this because we're going to do multiple lures. I'm going to layer upon layer upon layer to really show you this. Uh, first, let's take off this bypass so I can see it better. I want to choose a specific Laura. The CH one. Okay, the CH one is specifically about trying to make something look like an illustration. So I like that one. And I want to add another one on top of this. So, and you know, one thing I also like is that while the, this thing is currently running, but I'm still actually rebuilding it for the next run. So it's, I like that about this whole thing is I can, I don't have to wait on it. Clip, close the clip. What are we gonna add three? Huh? Might, uh, well, you know, you know, we're not gonna add three because, you know, we're always gonna add. We're gonna do a checkpoint merge anyway. So we added clip to clip. Model's been connected to. Okay, and the other one I wanted to add is this other one that makes it look like a flux style. So we're still using XL, right? as you can see. This is, this is also an XL model. So you know that's the same. We're still using XL, but we want to make it look like the flux kind of thing too. So this is basically what it looks like without the lore in action. That's how we ran it. The kangaroo wearing a straw hat. This is the cartoon real X, cartoon XL model. So, you know, it has this little illustrative look to it automatically. It's kind of looking like it has some type of style, but maybe we want to push that a little bit further. And that's where our lore is coming to play. And I think the last time we only used one lore. So we can make all these different adjustments. Take the bypass off this one. We'll load in this one. This one's supposed to, again, supposed to make it look more illustrative than would already look like just as the real cartoon XL thing and that's a cool feature too just just doing that like we just want to make it look more illustrative but again some of the issue is is maybe we wanted to make it look illustrative but at the same time we want to make it look a certain type of illustration so it has a mix between the two right when we're adding this in so if we want to up it a little bit more, we go over in this 100% value, 1.5, which is, you know, maybe a little bit more dramatic. So we can really start to see how it gets more illustrative in the way it, it draws out the thing and gives us less of this kind of realism thing. But the cool thing about it is having the base of that, that cartoon, real cartoon XL thing is you get the, if you want to bring some back, back some of that realism, you can in that but maybe you want to use some other models see now it looks more illustrative right it's because we added more to that illustration thing to it looks like somebody drew something but, but what if we wanted to get that little flux style thing in there it's like really like i don't know how, how you really describe it it's not necessarily it's it's leaning towards realism but let me put it down at like we'll put it at 25 just really lightly because i don't want it to take over the thing and again, we're not, there's nothing in here that says illustration. There's nothing here that says drawing. It's just a kangaroo wearing a straw hat, wearing straw hat, <laughs> wearing a straw hat. I, I didn't put a in there. Maybe it, it doesn't really make a difference. I don't think I'm pretty sure that that minor detail does not make a difference in this scenario. Only thing by just by manipulating Laura's and these models in here, we can really change a lot of things. So this is adding in that little flux style thing. It, it kind of rounds it a little bit more. It gives you more of a three dimensional look but it still has that harsh edge of like a drawing at the same time. Nice, and this one kind of like, it kind of favored, I think, a little bit more of the flux on this one on the far left, right? Or the flux style. So there's that, right? We did some illustrations, flux style thing, but then there's another thing we can do that can be a even more dominant than this. And this is where we add another one of these, which is loading an actual checkpoint. Yep, checkpoint. All right, so, but we're not gonna connect it there. We're gonna click on this thing, delete, right? We're gonna keep, neither one of them actually are gonna be connected because they have to go through a merger first. So this one, we double click and do model merge. You'll see it here, it's model merge simple, right? Just this one, don't even go through all the rest of the stuff. I don't know what you've, what other nodes you guys might have. So it's just simple as this. This one goes into model one, this one goes into model two, model goes into model, boom, that's it, right? This will merge them together. So we're gonna choose, let's choose, I really wanna show you something else before I even do this. Let's do cyber realistic, all right? So this one goes for realism. 
Now, this number is a little weird. What this means really is that it's like 100% of influence of model one, which means that there's no room of influence for the other one. So technically what this means is this is not gonna affect anything with this ratio on. It's weird that it's like that, but that's what it means. So if we tick this down to like, if we put this at 25%, what it means is 25% of this model will be showing up and it'll have 75% of this one showing up. It seems kind of weird to me. I don't know if it seems backwards to you guys, but it does to me. So it's really how much this, this ratio, quote unquote, because it's really just one number. This ratio makes this show up on between these two versus showing this one up. So this is this would just be the difference in that 100%. So the difference of this right now is zero. So you really won't see any real change, I think, in the way that it actually looks. You won't see the anything that's dramatically over realistic versus what it's doing right now. But when we do manipulate it, like when we go half and half, you'll see that there's a tendency for some one model to kind of dominate depending on what it is. As far as, especially when we're talking about styles. So see, nothing really changed. It says it still have the same kind of look and feel. But if we put this at 50, so this will make it half and half, right? This means it'll be halfway this, but really, when you got halfway realism on a model that has a little bit of real in it already, what it's really gonna do is it's just gonna start to dominate everything, specifically with this particular model. Which, again, this is the difference between like, I think, the way Laura's work versus doing a checkpoint merge is that it's a bigger set of models being put together. It's a lot more stuff going on when you do the checkpoint merge versus when you do the Laura's on top. So keep that in mind too. But again, it will also help you make something a bigger change if you really want it to affect the thing from the very foundation of it. And that's really where it comes into play if you really want it to look a certain way. And the cool thing about this too, is when you start to mix these lures plus the, the, the checkpoint merge or whatever, you start to find your own little style in there and the right combination gives you, you know, your thing. As you can see, it kind of dominated with the little realism thing. So the other ones don't really speak up too much. You got to turn this thing way down, I think, for this thing to show up. Maybe down, maybe down this much. So what this, again, what this means is that oh crap i think i did that backwards <laughs> yeah i did do that backwards this means that only the real will show up or the, the cartoony will show up like about 10 percent and 90 percent of it is going to be more realistic so this is actually going to make it look more real what we need to do is turn this up to about 80 <laughs> which means this will show up about 80 percent again this is always so backwards to me but the primary one which the primary one is based upon the fact that it's the model that's connecting the clip and the va you could reverse these if you wanted to reverse this thing, but I wouldn't recommend that because if, if you try to bypass these, then you have to disconnect them and reconnect them again in a certain kind of way. And I'm not gonna go over that. Oh, I changed this number by accident. Not, no, I don't want 800 batches. That's crazy. All right, that's what I want. Okay, so you can see like it got extra real off that last one because that was when we had it at this primary one only at 10%. So now at 80, what we're gonna get is more cartoony look, or at least more cartoony base look. Because remember, we still have this on top of it too. So again, that base is stack dominant. It doesn't really matter so much what these things are doing because it's so much of that it wants to look real. So if it wants to look real, you can do all these other things you want on top of it, but you're, you're starting off trying to be realistic. So keep that in mind. When you're choosing the models you choose, what are you really going for? And sometimes, I, I don't even know if 80% if is enough. We might have to go 85, 90, just to get it to like make, make sure that the realism is not too big of a thing inside of it. Because we also have the flux thing on, the flux style model thing on top of it. So that's adding its own little level of realism. So consider all of that stuff whenever you're doing these types of things whenever you're choosing these, you can see it's still pretty dominant it still looks pretty realistic right here and we can here let's bypass the oh crap did i run it twice i think i ran it twice <laughs> um i didn't mean to do that 
if we just let's let's bypass the flux one, right? See how how dominant the cyber realistic thing is by itself. See if the, that if it's just that on top of it. Oh, we need to take this down even further. Make it around you know only ten percent of the cyber realistic one is actually going to show up if we put it at 90 right maybe that's enough so we can get the cartoony look back because remember even real cartoon didn't look really cartoony <laughs> right see it's starting to come back a little bit with that just with taking out the, the flux thing but let's let's see if we just take it down even more and make it only 10 percent of cyber realistic and everything else the real cartoon so we'll still have a little bit of the a realism type of vibe in there but for the most part we're going for the 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 cartoony stuff because we still have this the ch thing on here right so the ch thing should influence it to some degree where it kind of tries to make it look a little bit cartoony but this is why model choices still very important in whatever you're doing i'm just gonna trust in what it's gonna do and we're gonna move i want to show you would it be a better merge for this cartoony stuff? Ah, anime. So yeah, let's say we wanted a certain type of cartoony look, like an anime look. It's best to choose a model built off that. And if you choose it back here, because I remember the last one we did, we chose it in Laura. But if you choose it back here, again, it'll dominate more. So you'll get more what you look. So we, it started to look a little bit more cartoony again after we took it way down, right? Okay, so Let's have it still way down like this, but do the anime illusion one. So we're just keeping everything the way it was. Now we're just taking the cyber realistic thing out and add, adding the anime illusion one in there, but only at 10%. So it'll be fed into the thing, but not so much. So we'll see how much that affects it versus what the effects of the cyber realistic thing was affecting this whole time. Cause it, the cyber realistic thing is still in here. But what's its influence? Like how dramatic of it is it gonna be via the checkpoint merger? This kind of stuff is really gonna help you way more than doing all this stuff inside of here. Once you get a hang of that, and the cool thing about it is once you get the workflow and the numbers the way you want them, you don't have to change them. You just keep that workflow. This is, and just label it. This is my anime blah, blah, blah style um, mixed with this blah, blah, blah. And then you just have it. And you don't have to ever mess with the prompts. You just use that as your base. And then whatever you want the image to be, you put that in the prompts. It's a whole lot more powerful than constantly thinking of the right words. And that's why I think maybe my prompts tutorial seemed kind of vague and not directly about prompts. Because one, prompts depend on actually the models too. But see there, boom, with just a little bit of that, with just a little bit, 10% of like the anime style, you can see Without all that, the cyber realistic thing influencing realism, we start to look cartoony with just 10%. Just 10%. The real solution and real powerful thing about Comfy UI is all of these nodes. Really get acquainted with the nodes and how they work, and then just write what you want. Nine times out of 10, it'll come out a whole lot better. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope it was shorter. And I hope it was informative. And if it wasn't, or if I said something that you didn't understand, or maybe I went too fast or need something further explained, or there's something specifically that you want me to explain in the simplest way I can, please write it in the comments, do all that, you know, like, subscribe, hit the bell thing, all of that, because I think this is a really powerful tool that I really like. And I think there's, a lot of tutorials that do it with a lot of confusing explanations or they don't really bother to explain anything at all. But hey, I'll try my best to do just that. Explain it in the simplest way possible. That's it for this one. Have a nice day.